All right, so we are going to talk about how the force of gravity works uh, and what the equation for it has to be and why. So the force of gravity, uh, which we're going to call Fg. Uh, first off, uh, the force of gravity is also called weight. Uh, and the abbreviation for that sometimes would be a uh, W. Uh, and so I'm generally going to use F sub G as the abbreviation for the force of gravity because it's consistent with all the other notation we use. It's F because it's a force, and then the subscript tells us what type of force it is. Um, but some people like to use W uh, to indicate that it's the weight vector, so their downwards arrow on their free body diagram is just labeled W. Uh, and that's fine, and you'll sometimes see that on... Uh, you know, uh, answers to uh, like AP questions or sometimes someone might do that uh, in a solution online or something and that's, that's fine, that's valid. Um, so we know, let's figure out how, we want to come up with an equation for what the force of gravity is. Uh, and so if we think about for an object in free fall, let's think about what the free body diagrams look like for an object in free fall, which is of course something that is only being affected by gravity. All right, so we know that an object is in free fall. Um, this is from our first unit. Uh, if it is uh, being acted on only by the force of gravity, if the only thing influencing its motion is the force of gravity. And so uh, we have a better understanding of what that means right now. Uh, now It means that on our free body diagram, the only, the only force should be gravity because no other force is having any influence on it. Uh, and so we could have an object that is moving uh, upwards. Uh, we said that counts as being in free fall. Uh, we could have an object that is at rest that I'm about to drop, and the moment I drop it, it's in free fall. And we could have something that is already falling, and that counts as free fall. Uh, all of those were something we talked about were free, counted as free fall when we were doing uh, our first unit on uh, motion. Um, and in all of those cases, so we got our object, I got my dot in the middle. Uh, if it's truly in free fall, the only thing acting on it is going to be the force of gravity. And so like here is where if instead of writing FG, I wanted to write W for weight, that's fine. Um, so if I take a ball and I throw it up in the air, um, and I just, you know, watch it uh, move. Uh, after I've let go of it, my hand is no longer throwing it. And so as it moves upwards, the force of gravity is pulling downwards on it. Uh, that is the reason it slows down. As it is moving upwards, gravity is going to pull down on it, slow it down. When it gets to the top of its path, gravity is still pulling down on it. It stops moving for an instant, but gravity is still pulling down on it. That's why it starts to fall. And then as it falls, gravity is pulling down on it. Uh, and uh, as it's falling downwards and gravity pulls down, it's going to get faster and faster and faster. And so every single one of these uh, has to be what's going on. And we know in all three cases, uh, we know that the acceleration has to be downwards or negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and that magnitude, 9.8 meters per second squared, uh, we call g. And so we could say the acceleration has to be downwards at g. Um, and so using Newton's second law, uh, the fact that our diagrams look like this and our acceleration has to be like this, um, we can figure out what's going on because not only in all three cases is that our acceleration, in all three cases we can see that our net force is just equal to the force of gravity because in all three of our pictures, uh, the only force we have is the force of gravity. And so if we add up all the forces, it's the only force. Uh, and we know that our net force has to be equal to our mass times our acceleration. Uh, and so we know that the magnitude of the net force is the force of gravity, or the magnitude of the force of gravity. Uh, we know the acceleration has to be g. Uh, and so we can conclude that 
the magnitude of the force of the gravity has to be equal to m times g. So you'll notice there's no vector sign here, so this is the magnitude of the force of gravity. Uh, and this is going to be in newtons. M is the mass in kilograms, and G uh, is uh, the freefall acceleration uh, due to uh, gravity, uh, which is just 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, that gives us the magnitude, the direction of the full force of gravity, so if I write it as a vector, is going to be down, uh, or more properly, towards the center of the planet. Uh, and we'll talk about gravitation more formally later and where it comes from and how you deal with uh, gravity on like a star or something like that. Um, but for now, uh, down meaning towards the center of the Earth. And so if you got some sort of weird diagram where you're looking at the Earth like all sideways or something, uh, it would still, the force of gravity points towards the center of the Earth, which is straight down the way you would normally draw a diagram. Um, something to uh, note about the way this equation works. We know this acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, that is always the freefall acceleration for an object in freefall, no matter what its mass is. Doesn't matter if it's a penny um, or a pool table uh, or an entire swimming pool. Uh, it will always uh, fall um, with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And so if that acceleration is constant, that means that our force of gravity has to increase uh, depending on the mass, because if we have uh, twice as much mass, uh, this equation will give us twice as much force, which makes sense because we know from Newton's second law that the more mass you have, the more force you need in order to get the same acceleration. And so since we always want to have the same acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared, we obviously have to have an equation for the force of gravity that scales with mass. Uh, and so uh, just a little note. Uh, Fg changes uh, based on the mass of the object. Uh, it's a direct relationship. Um, so more mass means more force of gravity. Uh, so that the free fall acceleration will always be g, 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, and so we can use that uh, in our problem solving now. If we know the force of gravity, we can figure out the mass. Or if we know the mass, we can figure out the force of gravity. Uh, or maybe in some sort of weird planet, we or weird problem, we're on a different planet. Uh, and we don't know g. We don't know what the local uh, free fall acceleration is because we're on the moon or Mars or something. Well, if we're somehow able to figure out the mass and the force of gravity, we could even figure out what g is for whatever planet we are on.